Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We have a special guest in the building. Before you attempt it, I wasn't gonna attempt it. Ask her how to pronounce it. I was definitely gonna do Before that. Before you attempt it, sir. I was definitely gonna do it. Because I've been fucking it up. <laughs> how do you pronounce your name? Bonang. Bonang. Charlemagne told me Bonang. 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 It was a big thing at home that she couldn't pronounce my name. Yes, and yeah. I was I was shouting her out on my podcast because yeah. you know I really follow her Instagram because mm-hmm. she really like be living a life, mm-hmm. and I kept. <laughs> saying Bonang, but it's Bonang. 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 It means look at. Look at. Look. Bonang. They don't call you nothing for short? Queen B, right? Yeah, they just call me B. B. Home, yeah. Well, we'll do B. Yeah, yeah. B. 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 B in the building. <laughs> How do you pronounce your last name? Mateba. Mateba. Yes. Mateba. Mateba. Not yeah, Mateba. that's easy. Mateba. Mateba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm going to stick to B. Yeah, B is easy. Nice and simple. Who, who is B for the people outside of South Africa who may not know? B is a uh, South African media personality. Mm-hmm. By profession, I am a TV host, TV presenter, and I've branched out into other, you know, many little things. I have a, um, a broadcasting background, a bit of radio. Um, I host some of the biggest shows in South Africa, uh, you know, live productions and uh, events around the world. And uh, I'm a first of many, they say, in my country. I see that. Yeah, a first of many. And... Um, Recently became a, a winemaker. I launched a, a luxury beverage line called the House of B&G, and I make a sparkling wine, a Brut Rosé, and a Brut. So, uh, yeah. You're being very humble right now. Because <laughs> so when I, I said you make your own money. Let me tell you Yes, something. I do. Yeah, no, yeah. When I, I was in uh, South Africa last year for yeah. Global Citizens Festival, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I saw somebody pull up, and I said, is that Beyonce? Because <laughs> Oprah had just I pulled wish. up, right? So, <laughs> so I was like, who is that pulling up so heavy? <laughs> right. And it was B. What you mean pulled up? How, how did they pull up? So it was kind of heavy. What kind of cars was y'all in? We were in a few cars, you know. I mean, it's, it's South Africa. It's our playground. We're allowed yeah, to, yeah, yeah. you know, go big. It was a few cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I had a lot of people there. I had my friends and family. I had my team. So um, I like to be prepared. And that takes a, a couple of people. So Let's run yeah. some stats down. Okay. Mm. You oh, have boy. an app called uh, B- Banang. By Celsi. By yes. Celsi that has over 780,000 monthly user wow. yes what is on this app it's exclusive content you okay. know the things that i get up to when i'm in america when i'm around the world when i'm doing my thing you know um it's very interesting that people back at home have become very interested in how i do my business so mm-hmm. i've kind of created content around that um and just on many things that you don't see on my social media uh, video content interviews uh behind the scenes of certain things you know how much is the app per month I have. Pardon? How much do you charge per month for the app? It's, uh, I think it's 60 rand per person a month. That's How much like, is that in American? I don't know. 60 rand. Yeah, one rand is six, no, one rand is, five, no, one US dollar is 16 South African rands. Okay, so, so multiply that times 780. He's trying to calculate how much every money month. he makes up the every month. That's just one That's stream of revenue. <laughs> He's trying to calculate your money yeah, over there. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. You have a book? I do have a book. Okay. Um, uh, I do have a book from A to B. Mm-hmm. I also have a production company that recently produces, uh, well, produced my reality show, Being Bonang. So we wrapped season three. That was on a, a major channel back at home. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I do a little bit of everything. You did a film? Yes, That's your... public figure that yeah. I produced um, that is uh, on Amazon Prime Video as we speak and was uh, premiered at the Manchester Film Festival. Has done very, very well. Uh, it's about the social ills around uh, social media and uh, sort of the psychological impacts it has on, on society and the youth. And I'm a global citizen ambassador too. Mm-hmm. So um, I have a bursary fund. I educate African girls. I take them through school. And that's one of the things that I'm, I'm kind of uh, championing right now. Yeah, I'm I'm saying all that to say she can afford the fur she's wearing, okay? That's what I'm saying. Who didn't think she couldn't? No, I'm just letting people know. I'm trying to paint the picture for mm-hmm. people who don't know. Have you seen mm-hmm. the house? I, I, that, well, something I saw that <laughs> on Instagram. Like, how, was that yours? Yes. Wow. Yes. How many square feet is that? I don't know. I don't, I don't really. <laughs> you say I don't know that. I don't really it's know. It's, shit, it's, bro. It's, it's, it's enough for me. It's good. It's yeah. not enormous. Yeah. Yeah, but it's okay. And she's only 32 years old. Now, how did you get your start in the media industry? Well, uh, you know, back home in South Africa, what's very interesting is that TV presenters are able to, um, you know, create kind of big, very big careers. Mm-hmm. I was inspired by a number of 
TV presenters back home and um, and ha- the usual, you know, auditions. Mm-hmm. Went to a TV presenting school, started auditions, got my big break on a show called Live on SABC One, which is a, uh, it's like a like a 106 in Park. It was mm-hmm. the biggest okay. music show in South Africa. So I'm sort of a, you know, that's how I got into the media, media industry. I started as a VJ. Um, and from then just moved on from one show to the next, you know, started my commercial uh, brands as well. And yeah, the rest is history. But well, wasn't one of your parents in the corporate world? My mom is in the corporate, in the corporate world. world. Yeah. Okay. She is uh, senior vice president of Sasol, which is a, a big oil sort of tech company back home. And your father is a lecturer. Uh-huh. So he teaches yeah. at university. He does. He teaches okay. political sciences. And uh, so I have a, a great balance of, of both. My, my parents are very um, academically driven. I'm sort of the only person that branched into, into you know, media and entertainment. Very weird. It took a lot to... Um, convince them. To convince them. Yes. Yeah. It's not, a, it's not a career that, you know, normally makes a lot of money that people can make great money out of. And, you know, still in South Africa, it's not very, taken very seriously, the profession of entertainment. Because there's not a lot of money around it. You have to do a lot of many things in order to kind of live an okay life. I was going to ask you how they felt about it, because I'm sure they wanted you to be a doctor. Or, yeah, of course, a yeah, teacher. Yeah. I wanted to be a teacher, actually. Really? Um, and then I just ended up, found my way somehow in, in media. Yeah, I wanted to do many things, but I love children. I'm Cancerian. You know, I'm a big nurturer at heart. I I'm a cancer. To, I know you are. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, super sensitive, probably. Yes. Yeah. All Emotional. Right. Yeah, very moody. Feel everything. Yeah, and very yeah. caged, and it's always somebody's fault and never yours. That is something that I have learned. That is the truth. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Very small. Through in all therapy, aspects. I have uh-huh. learned to, a lot. No. Yeah. Through therapy, I've learned to hold myself accountable. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I am very self-aware in that aspect. All right. But mm-hmm. I do feel like you know, uh, going into the new year, I don't want to be on bad terms with anybody. Anyone? Yeah. So, so you need to do? apologize to me. Everybody so, needs to apologize to me. <laughs> see? You see? <laughs> you see? Wrongs you? It wrongs me. Exactly. You Always. I think All that right. you apologize to everybody that, that you had a problem with. I don't have no problems with nobody. See? <laughs> See, that's part of the problem. So how did you convince them that your entertainment is the way? Well, I, 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 I forced my way into it. You mm. know, I, I, I just, there was, a, there was a time where my mom said, okay, I'm going to give you five years. Let's see what you're going to do in five years. In five years, I was able to, uh, you know, uh, land that very, very big show called Live on SABC One, which has over, you know, three, four million viewers. It's it's really, really an enormous platform. And uh, from then on, went on Metro FM, which is uh, the biggest commercial um, radio station in South Africa, four million listeners too. Um, I had a radio show there. And after that, she says, okay, well, it seems you know what you're doing. Um, go ahead then, girl. Mm-hmm. And the rest is history. Yeah. How did you meet Charlemagne? I just told you. At a Global Citizen. Oh, so you met him actually there. You yeah. Him before mm-hmm. Yeah. How did he approach you? He, it was so weird. And I, I, we, were, I, we were walking through the parking lot and he was sitting outside, like <laughs> randomly <laughs> behind a tent. He stuck outside. That's a lie. And I think he was sitting with his daughter, book. right? Yep, yes, yep. sitting outside. And we were walking it back into the venue. And then he just stood up. I said, oh, hi. Oh, my gosh. It's you. What are you doing here? Hey, little man. How are you <laughs> Not doing? Not little you man. Doing I just <laughs> thought it was very weird because no one had known that he was in South Africa. Little man, you can't get in the club. Let me help you. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a club, first of all. I'm talking to the young lady. I just, was backstage at Global Citizen. I just thought it was really strange that he was standing outside. I was just like, hey, at Lebatum, what is this man? Anyway. Um, started a conversation. What is this little man doing out there? Started a conversation with him, yeah, mm-hmm. and asked him what he's doing there. I introduced myself, he introduced himself, and the rest is history. And then we, you know, I kind of spoke a little bit on DM. I told him I really want to come to New York and try to do a couple of things with certain people. And, the, you know, that was it. Okay. Yeah. I, loved, I love the way you move because it's so strategic. Like, why do you believe it's important to be strategic with, like, how you've moved thus far in your career to get to this point? Um, I just think, uh, you know, strategy is a plan. And when you plan things, it just, you know, makes it a bit more easier to navigate because you have a clear direction. When you sort of uh, are doing too many things at once, you sort of uh, have the ability to lose yourself, you know, somewhere through there. And I find just strategy clears your head. Um, And also because you know what you want, you know how to get there. So you, you don't waste a lot of time. And with, with, with everything that you do, what do you enjoy the most? Because you do so much. You named a couple of them. I enjoy what my profession, you know, hosting live TV productions. I'm a, a big broadcaster at heart. I'm a great, um, you know, I love um, 
interviewing and having conversations with people. I love music. I love, um, you know, being be in front of the, the, the camera and behind the mic. Mm -hmm. It is, um, it's something that brings a lot of joy to my heart. But, but definitely TV hosting is up there. Mm -hmm. it's my, my, my absolute, it's, it's, it's where I'm uh, the happiest. Is that sure. your camera crew outside? Yes. Why are they outside? I don't know. I think oh. they just got <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. I, they, um, well, yeah. Are they allowed inside? Yes, if of they course. want to, yeah. they, They'll come probably on, come inside. Bit. They will. Yeah. But yes, Who's I'm... Uh, you are, I'm what? what are you? Shooting a pilot or something. For what? Um, you can't say? Yeah. Okay. Just, it's a very... Um, it's going to be a, a great show. Now, what, for people back home in South Africa. Now, it's like African a Christmas special. Ex exploding so much right, in the last 10 years, 12 years, 15 years. Mm -hmm. How does that uh, help with you? Does it help you? Is it benefit you? Because I see it's it's. I'm looking at your page and you're crossing over not just to South Africa. You're mm. all over the place. Absolutely. Has that been beneficial? Absolutely. You know because it's hard to get South African artists here. Like it's very hard. Yes. It's, it's very difficult. Yes, it really, really is difficult. But I've seen through, um, you know, music and African music specifically. African music has um, broken the door for many other creatives to kind of find their way in America. Mm -hmm. um, Afrobeats has sort of, um, sh you know, sparkled a bit of light on things like designers, mm -hmm. photographers, um, filmmakers, producers, people like me who find and, and you know, create careers of things that are non-traditional. Yeah, non-traditional meaning acting, singing, or uh, sport. Um, and because of people like let's say Burner Boy or Whiskid or David or Tiwa Savage mm -hmm. and um, the global community being saying, oh, what's happening in Africa? You know, the likes of Lion King, Black Panther, things like that, that get, you know, the brains of people here asking, what are those Africans getting up to down there? Mm -hmm. You know, so as soon as they swift the neck down to Africa, then they start finding lots of other little gems, you know, people like me and, you know. Uh, Copy. Yeah, and, and Trevor Stierman and uh, Tebe Makuku and so many other amazing South Africans and Africans who are really trying to find their way here and around the world. Now, do Africans and South Africans uh, still look down upon black Americans? Or was that ever really a thing? I don't know mm -hmm. if we looking down is the appropriate description. Um, I know we're different. Mm -hmm. um, and I know a lot of uh, black Americans are very fascinated to know where they come from. You know, they want to, they're very fascinated about Africa. I know it's two, it's the same Africans, but it's two different personalities, if I can say that. Mm -hmm. I don't think looking down is the word. No, we don't look down. I think, you know, there's certain things that are like, okay, y'all are different. That's nice. What do you explain? I like, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I want to know. <laughs> it was different. Because I'm moving anyway, anyway, so. <laughs> Where are you moving to, Shalami? South Africa. Oh, really? Yeah. Where are you going to stay? I don't know yet. I'm going to figure it out. Okay. Well, you know, um, let me, I'll, I'll speak for South Africans. So South Africans are very conservative. We're very, a little bit more humble, a little bit more quieter, a little bit more in our corner. Mm -hmm. uh, black Americans are very out there. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, You know, yeah, that yeah. speak very loudly, very proud, very confident, very tall. For no reason. I mean, there's a reason sometimes, <laughs> I guess. But, you know, what I am, uh, uh, also black Americans are very similar to Nigerians. Right, like very tall, very confident, very loud, very bold. South Africans, no, no, no. We we are the direct opposite. We're just like, yeah, Ubuntu is a big thing to us. Like you need to be humble and be relatable and be very down down to earth. I was told that I don't want to say look down, but they look at us different because we don't necessarily know who we are. Yes, okay. or maybe where you come from, and come maybe from. you are. Fascinated, but also I think it's a, it's just a, a global thing. I think the mm -hmm. perception around Africa is just very strange and very not true. And what what people think Africa is is not actually what it is. Not at all. It's like so fabulous sometimes. And, and that's why that's why I follow you on Instagram. Yeah, and I follow yeah. Cuppy, and I'm like, yo, these women are living the yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. and South people Africa. think you know you get there, there are no roads, and there's you know there's an elephant walking outside. No. I'm like, no, honey, I don't see no animals unless I go to the zoo. You yeah. know, the, the Our Louis, safari. Yeah, the Louis Vuitton store is closer to me than an animal. No, yeah. really, that's just what it is. I mean, we hosted the FIFA World Cup. Do you not know there's infrastructure? There's people just don't say it. They, they remember they, people always when you think of Africa, which is so stupid. They think yeah. of the flies, the flies the and the kids' face. Yeah. yeah, and I go two, three times a year, and I love it. Yeah, I love it. We I sat outside so Nelson Square, Nelson Mandela Square mm. Mall, and I was like, it feel like LA. Yeah, I mean, parts of Cape Town are exquisite, and that's the thing about South Africa. There's mm -hmm. many sort of many things in one country. 
Um, have you, you haven't been to Cape Town, right? No. no. It's one of the most Cape Town. beautiful cities no. in the world. It will take it your is. breath away. It is like God was really, really, really happy on the day he made Cape Town. He beautiful. really was in a very years, good man. mood. You, I heard his you beaches should. and everything. It reminds me of a it, Miami, but better, uh, uh, mm. uh, better than Miami. Like on the beach, it feels good. The vibe feels amazing. Yeah. It's, it's, I the love it. The weather's good. The weather's great. December's the best time because it's warm. You guys have winter fall. Mm -hmm. That's what you call it, fall. Mm -hmm. um, it's summer back home, and it's the best time of the year. It I is. heard there's a lot of racism in Cape Town, though. It's segregation. Segregation. Yes. Okay. A little bit. What's the difference? Um, you know, a lot of how the, the, the Cape Town is set is still, uh, you know, pre-1994, where all the black people were, were in the out, you know, settlements outside of the city. And mm -hmm. it's still very much like that, where the black people are outside of the city and have, um, you know, a, a very long way to go to get to their jobs. And the jobs are in the city and all the white people are in the city, the great property, the high property, you know, values a little bit closer to the city. So... And uh, I mean, restaurants and things like clubs and things that are available to black people versus white people. is It's very different. It's not in your face, mm -hmm. but it's its there. Do we, do, do South Africans own a lot of their own? Like I know in, in, in when I was in Johannesburg, I seen a lot of black owners. Yes. I didn't see it that much in, in Cape Town. Not so much in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. And in South Africa now we have what we call black diamonds, which is the, the you know, the black middle class that are, Finally, you know, starting to have a bit of capital creating and, you know, buying houses and cars. It's only now. Uh, Cape Town, not so much. Mm -mm. Not not a, a, anything, actually. I didn't see nothing like owned by yet. Yeah, really, really tiny. Nothing yeah, owned. Black Diamonds, I find their way a little bit more successful in Johannesburg. You know, mm -hmm. that's where the economy of South Africa is. And then a bit of Limpopo, Pretoria around there. You yeah, know? They also it's a little bit friendlier. It's like a Atlanta. It's like black friendly. Right. Mm. I don't know if that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Now, they also said that um, in the last couple of months, they said robberies have been going up. I, I, has that been true? I saw that hotel in Cape Town got hit up. You're asking me all the wrong questions. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, you know, it is unfortunately the murder capital of the world, Cape mm -hmm. Town. and The uh, world? And you're telling us to go there? That's like me telling you to go to Pink Out Project. But, but it doesn't mean but you're going like, to go there and they're going to kill you, Charlemagne. I can't tell. But you're not going to go in the middle of the sky. You're not going to the middle of Brooklyn like this or on the ocean. Or on the, you know, there's, you. there's certain areas where you just don't yeah. go. And if you do go, just make yeah. sure you got the right people with yeah. you. Yeah, that's all That's all it is. Like, I mean, obviously, if you go anywhere in the world, it's not safe. You can't go, go anywhere in the world in the middle of the night sometimes. Um, but it is, unfortunately, like that. You know, South Africa has a lot of crime, but there's so much more that is that it has to offer mm -hmm. and they're parts of south africa where the crime isn't so much and the crime you know is going down but unfortunately that is very true what, yeah what what role does apartheid still play when you're like a black celebrity like yourself does it hinder you from certain opportunities um no not as much anymore you know our entertainment industry has changed quite a lot a mm -hmm. lot of the you know the the top five or top six celebrities in south africa are you know uh black uh, it's very black driven. South Africa is a black country. There are mm -hmm. a lot of black people. So a lot of the, you know, our media um, can support a lot of black entertainers, but also our entertainment industries are separate. You know, what, what, what the white people watch and the music they listen to and what they, you know, read is different from what the black people watch and listen to and read. Same here. And sometimes there's only a few celebrities who are able to connect both, you know, audiences, which I've, had the great honor of being able to do because mm -hmm. of the type of shows that I've been able to to be part of back home. But, yeah. So when I look at you, it says, like, you're always, the seems like you're always the first black South African to do something. Yeah. To be featured on numerous magazines. Yeah. And do this and do that. Yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, South Africa was born, in, I mean, in 1994. Our entertainment industry is not even 20 years of age. So wow. it's still very, very fresh. Very, very fresh right at the beginning. There's not a lot of money for certain things. There's not, a, you know, we're only beginning the South African Music Awards instead of the production, um, the South African Sports Awards. Um, there's South African Comedy Awards only started about five years ago. Um, the SA House Music Awards are only five years old. So our country is only at the beginning of the entertainment, you know, industry. So, be, and I think because of that, I've been able to be the first of many things. But I think there are a lot of, Girls like myself are going to come from South Africa for sure. What does the U.S. media industry have that South Africa doesn't? Africans. 
fresh, deep, like Africans from Africa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, you know, uh, uh, what I mean by Africans, I mean fresh, different um, content, people, messages, you know, music, um, shows, stories, history. Because black Americans, I think, are so, so interested in where they come from and what they're about. You know, why isn't a lot of where they come from and what they're about, you know, on more commercial stations and, you know, television and radio. Just things that Because they rather teach about. us about slavery here in America. They don't want us to connect the dots back to Africa. That's the power source. Yeah. Well, that needs to change then. Mm -hmm. See? You know, and, and you know, the, I mean, you know, that's the thing about what, what Africa, what people think Africa is like poverty, slaves, poverty, slaves, negative, there's no water. Uh, you know, that's what people think. And that needs to change completely, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? That's the question. You got to tell those stories. Exactly. With, with all the success that you've achieved in South Africa, why mm -hmm. do you need success in America? Because I, I saw a headline that said, <coughs> Boning wants to take over America. No, uh, uh, success in America. Um, oh, success in America, please. No. Have you seen my house? <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> like success in America. Ah, what is that? No, I think it's it's um it's success in another country besides home. It's a challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm somebody that wants to kind of always push the envelope. I've done a lot of many things at home. I think I've done a lot of everything at home, you know. And I think there is still that American dream for a lot of Africans and a lot of South Africans. I think there's still a lot of when you come here and realize your dream, like Trevor Noah, you know, Charlize Theron, there are many incredible South Africans who have done that. And it's almost like you, it's, it's uh, I mean, that's just what it is. America is the pinnacle when it comes to entertainment. So any entertainer mm -hmm. would want to break it here because then it means you are the best of the best, mm -hmm. you know? And for me, that is important. If I say I want to be, you know, the best TV host or the best whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to be the best of the best, I think you need to compete with the best of the best. And I think you find them, in the United States of America. Do you have a plan for that? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on the breakfast club, so I think my plan is going very well. True, <laughs> very true, <laughs> very true. It always shocks me when we go out to South Africa and get that kind of love from South Africans, but then you forget like YouTube. Yeah, I mean, yeah. South Africa, South Africans are plugged in. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They are really plugged in. Absolutely. Social media has opened the world. I think it's made it so, mm -hmm. all of us are so much closer. And now we know stuff because we can see so much more, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, it's given us so much more access. It's make, made the world a smaller but bigger place, you know? And I think because of social media and, and all of that, I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't because of so social media. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to uh, do what I do. You know, I wouldn't be able to tell people my stories. I wouldn't be able to kind of get my work done sometimes. Um, and yeah, I'm grateful for that. I wouldn't be sitting here if yeah. it wasn't for that too. You won uh, at E E E People's Choice Awards this weekend. You won. Yeah. The, you were the first African to win Influencer of the Year. Yeah, in Santa Monica, and California. How'd yeah, that, that was feel? that was good. That was really really awesome. I mean, I've I, I'm an E Africa correspondent back in South Africa. Mm -hmm. We we have E E Africa mm -hmm. that does a lot of red carpets too. And I didn't think I was gonna win. You know why? Because that's a voter driven. Um, Award and imagine going up against David O and Whiskey and T One Savage. I was like, okay, well, thank you very much, e, you know. But you, the people at home shocked me, really, wow, really, dope. really, really did. They were on those voting lines every single day. To be the first of anything is really awesome, and I hope uh, you know it just inspires people and you know kids back home. That's what it's about. But I'm not an influencer. I, I want to correct that. Okay, I think I'm influential. I think in 2019 you need to really explain the word influencer. I, influencing down. is not my profession. Yes, because some people just have that in their bio on you think Twitter. When you think of influencer, yeah. you think of Instagram models that yeah. are influencers. And that's no, not yeah, right. and the people in that category, none of them were influencers. Tiwa Savage is not an influencer. David Owiskid, Diamond Platinums, you know, Casper Vest, Mini, those people are not influencers. they influential. Got right? you. Yeah. So listen, when guys try to holler at you, right? Because they know you got so much money. <laughs> are you married? Are you married? No, I'm not married. Oh, I see the, the rock on the. On oh the, no, no, that's it's just her uh, stunting. It's called stop nonsense. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> stop nonsense. No, let me Makes tell sense. you. No, I, no, 
I swear, <laughs> in South Africa, a, a, a wall, right? That like a, the, a barricade that like fences your house is called a stop nonsense. Yeah. So this ring is a stop nonsense. And I love that, by the way. I love the fact that that in South Africa they have the electrical current on top. Yes. So if you try to hop the gate, you get you get zapped. I love it. It's called a stop nonsense. So what if you don't want the nonsense to stop? I, what if you want the nonsense from a certain person? Well, you know, then, you know, he'll, he'll, I don't know. How do you know. they approach you? I, I just, they don't. Yeah. Because yeah, you got that big rock on you. <laughs> that big rock, you got the fur, like you just. They don't. They actually do not. And it's, it's okay. Really? really? Mm, mm. I read an article. You said, um, you said something like you, one day your kids will be something and everybody was like, oh. She's going to have kids. Oh, yeah, when are you having kids? Yeah. Please have children. I'm like, oh my God, I will have kids again. I'm not dying. Um, but I, I will eventually have children when I'm done with everything, you know? Uh, when I will think, that be, though? When is enough enough? Um, when you find a nice guy. It's going to be hard with that rock on your finger. Uh, uh, you know, but... So it's hard to find <laughs> nice men all over the world. It's, not, it's America, it's Africa, it's just... Yeah, I think men in general are very, uh, very uh, tough category. Really? Mm, they're very a tough, childish. Very tough um, wall to break down. Really? Men are strange, eh? I, I don't know. Yeah, well, I'm telling you. I used to be one. And then what happened? I turned into a god. Yes. So it is difficult for you yeah, to Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a bit tricky. You know, um, it's just tricky. What about yeah. American men? Pardon? What about American men? I've never been with an American man. Really? Yeah. Really? I really like African men. Not Tall, like dark, beautiful African men. Well, technically, we are African. Technically. Yeah, but like African, African. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, African, yeah, yeah, African. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like America, from... America, we have the Black Men Don't Cheat movement. I heard about that. Yeah, How's yeah, How's that yeah. going? It's going very well. Okay. Yes. All righty. Uh, okay. Infidelity has decreased 95% that all throughout America. Yes. Where did you get those stats from? Yes, yes, yes. So and where do, they, where, do you, where do they convene? You know, I'm looking for... Yeah, meetings. A, Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have meetings. Women aren't invited because it's meetings just to uplift each other, empower each other, and what, okay. let each other know that we love each other, value each other, appreciate each other, and okay. we take, they take that energy and they bring it to our women. And the last meeting, what was the, the, the topic? Um, Black men not cheating. Yeah, yeah. Just, just encouraging each other. Yeah. It's his faithful black male associating me. Wow, wonderful. So I'm saying all that to say, mm. don't discount American men. Because okay. I don't know if the black right, men don't cheat movement forward. has gotten to Africa I'll, yet. I look forward to meeting American men then. Do, do, Wonderful. So, do South African men cheat? It seems no men, there are no men that cheat at all, it seems. So. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I'm with yeah. that. Okay. I like you. That's good, B. Okay. I'm glad yeah. you're on our side. No, no, I'm, I'm vibing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, why is Ryan Seacrest a template for you? Because Ryan Seacrest um, is a TV personality turned, well, a radio star turned owner of a huge, massive production company and then just created this enormous genre of reality shows that yes. changed the world. Yeah. So he is a a first of many things. And because my my career has sort of taken that pattern, um, I look at him for a lot of inspiration and a lot of, you know, if I all right, want, you know, a bit of knowledge around this, that and that, he's somebody that I, I follow and I watch very closely. You want to connect those dots. Yeah, yeah. Ryan is an interesting one. When, you mm. know, I, 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 whenever I try to describe you, I always catch myself because I'd be like, she's like Kim Kardashian, but that don't feel right saying. Yeah, I'm not like Kim Kardashian yeah, yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I, um, I. And why would you say Kim K? I'm just curious. I think maybe because the lifestyle, reality show. Yeah, lifestyle and and. The, yeah, the, but I, I was, um, I, I was on television and radio prior to starting my reality show. Gotcha. I think my reality show was, uh, you know, was, oh, please, 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 can you do it because we want to see how, you know, your life happened. And, but yeah, no, not definitely not like Kim Kardashian at all, but there are aspects of her business that I really admire. Right. Yeah. Have you met her yet? Yes, we hosted her back in South Africa. And... <laughs> Um, what was she that came, laugh for now? What was that? <laughs> she came with that was Chloe. Like the, she was pouring it out. No, she was she stuck was in the she was me. stuck in the airport, right? Remember? And then um, she was in Cape Town, and she's like, "I'm stuck in Botswana, right?" Or something like. She sent out a tweet. We're like, "This not is Botswana. not Botswana." And you know, there's this thing of Afri like Americans like to say, "I'm going to Africa." No. Where in Africa are you going? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, Africa's yeah. not a. It's not. It's like. Are you going to South Africa? Are you going yeah. to Joburg? We don't say I'm going to the United States of America. No. Where in the United States of America right. are you going? So but she was stuck. Why was she stuck in the airport? 
I don't know. Maybe it was raining or the I don't know something. Oh, the flight was delayed. Yeah, something okay. like that. But it was, it was very very funny. But Did it, you it, send it's your always... private jet for her? No, it wasn't available that day. <laughs> 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 yeah, but that's something that that so you also have a annoys private me. Jet? How many one or two? No, I don't have a private jet well. yet. No, I don't have a private jet, but I do make a great sparkling wine. So. Did yeah. you bring some? Yes, I did. Oh, can we try it? Oh, you got I the house? Them. You got the champagne with you? Of course I do. I didn't know. Yeah, Come all on. the way from Cape Town. I mean, I, I wouldn't bring, you know, South Africa makes the best wines bring in the world. Bring a bottle in. I want Where to, is I want, it? Yeah. We'll fetch it. Oh, I think it's in the car. We'll get I, it. We'll get it right now. Sorry. Oh. She said we'll right fetch now. it. I yeah. love this. I love it's it. It's in the car? We'll get okay. it later. I'll be yeah. on Instagram and it's like they... It's like they show it like they show Ace of Spades here. Or something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know why? Because I'm the first and only woman in, in Africa to have her own brand of MCC. And, and MCC is Method Cup Classique. I mean, we can't call it champagne. It's not made in champagne. Mm -hmm. But it's the same kind of uh, uh, process of creating the sparkling wine, double fermentation. And it's made in Stellenbosch in Cape Town, where the best wines in the world are made. Mm -hmm. And we made a brute and a brute rosé. And I think black people in, in South Africa see it as just like, a, oh my God, she actually did it. And, mm -hmm. and it's just so... Delicious. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. You're well, thank love you for it. joining us. I got one final thank question. Thank you. Do you think you're living out your purpose thus far? Yes, I think I am. And my purpose is maybe to teach or inspire or to break walls or um, uh, bring joy or uplift or uh, shine a light. But yeah, it feels like I am. And I'm not forcing anything. Mm -hmm. So it feels like I am. All right, B. Well, thank, thank you, you for, for having me. Us. Give me your Twitters and Instagrams, even though you got like seven million <laughs> On Instagram, it's at bonang underscore M on Twitter and uh, houseofbng.com and bonangmatiba.com if you want to, you know, check out where I'm at and what I'm up to. Word. Right, well, thank Word. you for joining us. And shout thank out to everybody you, in South thank Africa. Thank you. Always I go to South Africa twice, three times a year. So Come back. We love you in down. South Africa. We, we love you so it. much. I love, I love it so oh, much. You are the, every time you come there, it's like the biggest party. Yeah, I, come I back. love it. So Bring shout him. To, shout out to Les. Shout out to Tone. Shout yeah. out to uh, Sukasa. Shout out to everybody that flies me. I love it, man. Like, I it's would the move there. Best place I would move in this the world. Johannesburg, too. I like that. Yeah. One go, we both go. We could broadcast right from there. Yeah. Definitely. I'm, all, I'm getting moving to get away from y'all. I, I don't want to do nothing. <laughs> you can't leave me. Think you can leave me? Yes. No, you can't leave me. Queen B, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. What an honor. I really appreciate it. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.